so nice to see your beautiful face. Are you in your living room? It's so gorgeous behind you. Okay, so what, so what you can see is behind me. If you could see <laughs> in front of me, this is what we're doing at the moment. You know, like everything is set up so perfectly, but yeah. if I just flipped if it. You shift the camera like one little bit. Yeah. The other way. Saw... And what, what was actually so funny was, um, so, my, so obviously me and Ben are shooting in the same space, but because I'm smaller, the camera goes further in, so you can only see two of the shelves. So yeah. I arranged Ben shelves perfectly, <laughs> the two shelves perfectly. Well, the camera's gone out more because he's bigger and then there was all mess on the other shelves. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's the bit people shouldn't see. <laughs> Oh Sorry. my gosh, too funny. I saw something, I saw um, a clip of a newscaster's interview from some local US market. And he had like a blazer up on the top and he had no idea that you could see he was wearing no pants. Like I'm way too type A to go on national television, to go on any, I, look, I'm, wear, I'm wearing pants. <laughs> to go on anything without pants. <laughs> yeah, it's so um, it's like, <laughs> It's it's definitely a lot. I actually did an Insta Live yesterday and I wore jeans and the amount of people that commented being like, why and how are you in jeans? I was like, well, I've dressed up for you all and you can't even, be I thought you couldn't see it, but it's just that feeling, isn't it? Like 100%. I, yeah, and I, so I was wearing my slippers all the time, but now <laughs> if I need to be in the zone, I have to wear my trainers. I have to feel like I'm, like ready for the day dressed for victory dressed yes. for victory like i mean it makes me feel see I, I i have a feeling you're like me that you like putting the look together and having that creative process so for me it's not like oh my god gotta get dressed like i find that as a creative outlet but i imagine some people are like oh my god i don't even know i don't even i would wear i would just want to wear all black so they don't have to think about it you know i get it we have a lot of decisions I am not a throw the same thing on for the next four days kind of girl. Ugh, me neither. I, I will. <laughs> too many outfits for that. I have too many uh, outfits. I'll have like four outfit changes on a Saturday just because I feel like it. <laughs> it starts casual and then it ends up in a ball gown. It's like I wore double denim for one of my walks and I was like, honestly, by next week I'll be doing this walk in a ball gown. Like, that's, how, that's how I feel. Oh my gosh. So that's so cute. So, so you posted on, on social about how you're taking these walks by the London zoo. So <laughs> what have, like, what has that been an outlet for you? Like, how are you, how are you staying grounded during this time? So this central London living, I guess like New York can sometimes feel quite suffocating and London zoo is like so close to me and there's a walk through the park that backs onto it which is Regent's Park actually London Zoo is within the park wow and I discovered on one of my walks that there but I could see the camels so now every day I do this walk and it's an excitement I, I, I've been to that park so many times and I think one of the things that I'm really realizing is that I spent my whole life going from A to B. I never looked at what was on the way from A to mm -hmm. B. I've seen mm -hmm. street art that has probably been there for years that I never looked at. I, and in London, I'm, I'm sure there's the same in New York, but in London there, um, I actually posted it on my Instagram today there. It's called Notes to Strangers. And it's kind of, they're posters that are just stuck on the wall and it's like, um, you can do it. Or did anyone tell you you look amazing today? Like just really <sighs> posters and quotes that are just all over London. So that's what I see on my walk to the park. And I just, even before this time, a thing that matters most to me, a thing that de-stresses me, something that makes me feel calm is being outside. It's nature. It's always been like that. I'm quite mm. an outside girl and especially living in central London I really need those moments they really matter to me funnily enough I've now coincided this walk with backing onto London Zoo and I keep seeing the same camel and I look <laughs> at the camel. and what really really made me laugh is when I realized that one the camel has no interest in me whatsoever and I'm excited to see the camel. Me bothered. 
couldn't be couldn't be less bothered and number two i've now seen that camel more than any of my friends and family during lockdown it's hilarious but it, it's just become a source of happiness and excitement and humor in my day and i find especially at the moment that i am clinging on to those moments because they I just like to feel happy and I think that we are in control of that so if that is something that is free it's easily accessible it's part of the walk in my day that I, it's okay for me to do and it's just funny like who sees a camel in central London I do and now I <laughs> love seeing my camel it's, I'm loving it does he have a name he does well there is <laughs> You said that with such certainty. He does. You know why? <laughs> I'm not the only person who is enjoying the camel. So the, like one of the first few times that I saw the camel, I was standing there, I was looking at him, I was like, oh God. <laughs> so him is actually a her and I keep calling him a him and it, it's not, it's a girl. And she's okay. called, it's not Naomi, it's Noemi. Noemi or something like that. Noemi. No, yeah. Noemi. Something like that, not like. Well, no. Listen, I I love a queen who's like, nah. This is how you pronounce my name. <laughs> yeah, and it was like the zoo a queen keeper, in the any species. Keeper. Somebody was saying, "Where's Naomi?" And he was like, "It's no Amy." I was like, "Oh, he is precious about that camel. <laughs> he is precious." So we all we all need like a hype woman or a hype person to be like, <laughs> "You're doing great," and so. You go, no, Amy, in London Zoo. That is so amazing. So yeah. your past, and you're in your past life. Your actually, it's, it's still it's concurrent, but just not in in your current work. You were a professional dancer, and we're talking yeah. like on stages with Katy Perry, with Taylor Swift, with Kylie Minogue. Tell us yeah. about that because that is so freaking awesome. So I I've always danced from when I was three. Um, I used to go to dancing school all my whole way through school I would be at my dancing school five nights a week all day on a Saturday and I just loved it it was always what I wanted to do my mum was a dancer my sister was a dancer so it was always the way that I would I would go there wasn't anything else I wanted to do I left school at 16 went to a performing arts college for three years trained in everything also singing which was wasted <laughs> I can't sing. It doesn't stop me, but it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't stop me either, honey. But I definitely didn't go to school for it. I, lo I love that you're just like, I own this, even if it's not the I best. I love it. And I get messages from members saying, you sounded really nice. And I think you're lying, but thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but That's basically, so I did a three-year performing arts course. And then I graduated in 2007 and went into what we call here in the UK, commercial dancing. So that is TV shows, it's backing dancing, it's tours, it's basically the pop stuff. Mm -hmm. And I loved it and I worked really, really hard and I don't believe in luck. I, I believe that you, you work really, really hard. And along the way that means sometimes, yes. it, you know, especially in my twenties, I. I did sacrifice a lot. I sacrificed friends' weddings and birthdays and this and that. And in hindsight, maybe you look back and think, oh, I would have loved to have a bit more balance, but I wouldn't have had the career I had. And I, I'm me because of that. Mm -hmm. so it's definitely worth it. But I've had some incredible moments. I mean, one of my top, top moments was dancing at the closing ceremony for the olympics when it came to london oh and my god i was at that i was at that no I can't believe our little world if it were like if it were like a movie montage of our like friendship it would have been like me in the stands and you in the performance and then like fast forward that's incredible that's incredible I wait so what was that like because i was there and so i know like from the audience's end like the energy was like like, you know, when the energy is just like in your chest, like, so what was it like to perform in that environment at the London games? It's, that's crazy. It, it's, it, so the thing is you wear in is, and for the majority of the jobs that I've done as a dancer, you wear in is. So there is the element of sound from the crowd that sometimes you do miss. 
but sometimes you'd rather miss that than the cue in your ears. So you have yeah. to you have to work with it. But I've never experienced anything like it where you look out and just being in that space full of people for such a good reason. And like the Olympic Games were in London, it was incredible. The a moment that topped that feeling slightly was doing the Paralympics, which you know is just mm -hmm. like incredible uh, there's just so much respect for all of the athletes that are taking part absolutely but the closing ceremony for the paralympics was basically a cold play concert that we were dancing at slash i'm in the middle of this like yes yeah and basically dancing along to cold play performance you have the best seat in the house like the for dancer. one of the best the most iconic bands of all time <laughs> exactly and and it was incredible and one of my idols is Annie Lennox and at the Olympic closing ceremonies I danced with her and I just there have been a lot of pinch me moments along the way and sometimes as a professional commercial dancer you're not in a job that you're in for a year it's very fast it's three days here it's one week here it's two days here maybe a couple of months here and there so you have to be hungry, you have to be willing to hustle because you're only as good as the next job and you're, you're always wanting to carry on this buzz of an amazing career. So I feel like I've managed to keep a really good head on me where despite my career doing this, I've always managed to stay level-headed and appreciate the, emo the, the moments that come with it. And like, if I, now I sit and think about my career because I'm not in it, it's sometimes so wonderful to look back. Mm -hmm. and think, wow, like some of the artists, like there's a, like some of the arenas here that I look, that were always my dream. And I think that one of the best arenas in London is the O2 Arena. And I think it seats maybe around 20,000. And that's like the arena you want to be at. And I think, God, I've performed there like, over 30 times and that's just it there are so many moments now that I think I had so many dreams come true but I worked for them so I I own those dreams because yeah were, of course they were hard work you're able to reflect on them now but you also know everything that went into it that's why I don't believe in the humble brag I think that if you did the work you are allowed to proclaim your pride so I applaud you because that hustle I only know it as an outsider, but uh, you know, a lot, a lot of our, our team, many of our teammates were, were dancers before they came to Peloton. And that rigorous pursuit of like every day you are putting yourself out there to be judged and physically just drained. Um, it's not unlike what we do now. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. That is the thing. You know what? Sometimes you leave a dance career and being totally honest, you, there's not that much on your CV that, would you know work well in a normal job but the things that you learn the you know the life skills you travel you meet and work and learn about different people constantly mm -hmm. you have to be quick thinking you work with different choreographers you learn different styles so the first when I first sat on the bike I mean I never want to see my audition tape again I mean you know, I remember that. But I did feel so at home because I was experienced with lights and cameras and not as a Peloton instructor, but you, I, I felt so much respect in that moment for my career that made me feel ready for such yeah. a huge change. Mm -hmm. And like some, you know, you, you can't always, you don't learn that in school. You learn that by physically doing by the work. By doing it. By, by doing, doing it. it. That's it. And you're, you're slaying rides from home, live from your home in London. So what, yeah. what has, I mean, let's just give folks a sneak peek behind the curtain. Uh, and I know from my, from my experience here in New York City, it is a challenging, tedious process. Work in collaboration with our production team to set that up. What has been the, the most humbling or challenging or, or exciting piece of that live from home? element how, how, what, what do you want to highlight from that I think the thing that I will take away most from this time is that 
it's never felt, and I'm, I'm sure you'll feel the same, Robin, it's, it's never felt like we've been in something together more than now. It feels the most personal it's ever felt on this journey. We are literally in our homes trying to give our best back to everybody in their homes. We are trying to, it's not even recreate what we did in the studio. It's like we are bringing people together at a time where everyone wants it most. They need it for different reasons. And we're at the forefront of that, being the ones to say the words that I'm sure hundreds and thousands of members could say to each other and we have an opportunity to change people's days from our home. It's something that I want to carry back to the studio with me. When, yeah, when absolutely. We go back. That personal feeling, I don't want to ever forget that. I think it's added a new dimension to everything that we do. It's a, it's a beautiful connection that I think that we, we have built. It's more relatable as well. It's, it's scary, but it's beautiful. Yeah, there's an intimacy it's there. That... National as well. It's, it's, I'm loving it. Oh, Even that though... makes me so happy because, no, because like... on the, as a member, when I'm taking your classes from home, I'm like, oh my God, it's Leanne. So it's like, that heart connection is so real. So I'm, I'm happy that that's how you feel because that's definitely yeah. how I've been, I've been receiving it when I'm taking our teammates' rides from home. It's like insane. So can, we're gonna... Hold on a yeah. my, my, I must say, I have this yellow Mickey that I... I keep, love him. I love him. I don't and know. And the who, gold one. I, I literally, I don't know who... And um, people are, you know, people are taking my rides, but I'm not sure if it's for me or my Mickey. I mean, all of my messages are about, <laughs> are about the Mickey. I'm like, this is fantastic. We're like, where did you get that decor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some people are like, when your rides get tough, I keep looking at Mickey to see if he can give me some magic to help me out. I'm like, that's fantastic. I love that's this. That is, that is definitely Cody Rigby approved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we are about to head into a one minute plank challenge where you're gonna attempt to answer as many questions as possible while in the plank of your choosing, Hustler's Choice. At Hustler's at Home, we like to put the guests to work. Okay. <laughs> Thank you I'm ready. for indulging me. So we've got a bunch of questions in this little basket. Oh, and no, when basket is so cute. <laughs> Thank you, it's from my honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, I like it. A little Maldives basket. Um, so whenever you are ready, okay, I will start the timer. Coming so on. You, oh, I love it. I'm ready. I love it. She came to, she came to. I came to work to the, out. The, 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 the number to beat is 14. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Something you have cooked or baked in the last few weeks. Tofu. <laughs> What's your spirit animal and why? What's my spirit, spirit animal? My niece, because she's crazy and she dresses up every single day in fancy dress. Oh, middle. What's your middle name? I don't have one. Salty or sweet? Sweet. What le life skill do you wish they taught in school but don't? Oh. Thirty That's seconds. I like this. Last type of Peloton class you took and which instructor? It was my life from home. 90s ride. <laughs> Tried instructor who has the best sneaker collection? Probably you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done while teaching a Peloton class? 15 seconds. I called out a leaderboard name that I don't want to repeat now, but it was terrible. <laughs> My title of your memoir. Oh, God. Ah, <laughs> oh, time. <laughs> That's a hard one. You are amazing. Okay, <laughs> I know. No. It's like, no pressure. What would the title of your life story be? <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Because, you know, during this time, it, it's so funny because you, you, uh, you have time to be more creative. But yeah. also, because, because you have time to be more creative, you have so much going on that you're like, I can't think of anything. I know. Like, getting one thought out is a victory. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I had one cohesive thought. I'm done for the day. <laughs> Some days are really like that. All right. Your opportunity to put the host in the hot seat. Do you have a question for me? Yes. Okay. So 
my question to you, I'm a massive fan of visualization and I've got into this thing of creating a sparkly fitness bubble and I really vision <laughs> this sparkly fitness bubble around me that means I'm in my zone when I'm working out. And when I think of you, queen of Peloton, I Aww. think of you with your crown. So now I want to know, describe to me what your crown looks like when you're imagining you have your crown on. Oh, that's such an amazing question. Nobody has ever asked me this. I love the sparkly fitness bubble, by the way. When we take your classes, I like picture myself in almost like Cinderella's carriage. Like it is so next level. So my crown, I've always envisioned my crown to actually be a mixture of like raw materials at like almost like roots and thorns and like a cool like almost like like a, a glorious like tree trunk and then from that have like the metals and the diamonds and the bling yes. so it's kind of almost like an ombre from like roots like where i'm grounded i kind of visit like that's the root that's where i'm from and then on it every time i have an achievement i put another jewel in my crown so it's kind of a mix that. of raw materials and and gemstones I love that because if I was to say in one word what I thought your crown would be, it would be customized. Like, yeah, cool. for sure. Customized. Love for that. Sure. Is that. So my love to Ben, how, how do you think, you know, you made a big announcement that y'all were together and obviously you're keeping your relationship private, but is there anything that surprised you from like member reactions or like social? Cause we all just love you both so much. So I'm sure it's all love. I was so overwhelmed. Actually, we both were so overwhelmed by how, how kind everyone has been. Um, one thing that really, really made us laugh, obviously before we made the announcement, we were trying to, you know, to, to keep our own personalities. And we're in a two bedroom apartment in central London. It's not that big, so it's not that easy to <laughs> you know, make it seem like you're in different places. And someone sent a message saying uh, two kitchen, no, one kitchen, two bikes, as if to be like, <laughs> it's so obvious we're in the same kitchen, but we've had some, <laughs> we've had some really um, funny moments like that. I think the speculation is so fun. You know, people saying, oh, we've seen your straw bag and maybe some of Ben's holiday pictures. <laughs> you no, know, you're like, yeah. Oh no, Rich, I'd be we're, so good. Yeah, you're but, pretty sure you're both on the same beach, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're both somewhere special, you know. I think what's oh. been amazing is that when we announced it, it was just at a time where any good news is yeah. so welcomed. And I think we're so lucky to be in a job where you can basically be yourself. So the amount of people that have said, we thought you two would be so lovely together because, you know, that's such a credit to the, to what we do because people are seeing our personalities and then thinking, oh, they would be lovely together. I mean, we didn't think that at first. When I first met Ben, I was like, no way. He's a finance <laughs> guy. He's a finance guy. I'm a dancer. I mean, we're so wrong, <laughs> but it's just... It's so lovely and obviously, you know, people are now figuring out, like I said before, about the shelves and how we're, <laughs> a lot of people think that we're trying to trick them and then someone will say, oh no, they're in a relationship and they're like, oh, but I think the best thing, and I think people can see this, the, the best thing is that, that you always want to give 100% of yourself and now we really can. Yeah. And you know, and I don't shout at Ben if he films something in the kitchen because I'm like, now I can never film in the kitchen. <laughs> right, right. Now that background is blocked for me forever. <laughs> yeah. So now, yeah, this now like, now we can, we can be us. So it's lovely. Well, it's interesting because like, we're all establishing a new normal, but now you've got a new normal that actually is your real norm. It's much more reflective of your real normal. So it's just nice yeah. to be able to see both of y'all. <sighs> Exhale yeah, a little bit. Also, I must say what was so funny is that, so we'd had, we, we both did the announcement on our Instagrams and then we were like, oh, we should celebrate. 
So then we had like a glass of champagne and, and we had a little dance in the kitchen. Oh, with oh, yeah, so cute. I can't. And then about two minutes later, we were like, nothing's really different though, is it? Like we're, we're the same. And then we just carried on back to normal, you know, try being like, every, it's actually just the it's same. The same. It's we're the same. same. <laughs> Which I think is actually a brilliant sign. Exactly. That's a very good sign. Well, Leanne Hainsby, thank you so much for being on Hustlers at Home. Where can people find you? They can find me at, at Leanne Hainsby on Instagram and Leanne Hainsby Peloton on Facebook. Sending you love from NYC. I'm giving you a virtual hug, virtual heart, my love to Ben. And I will see you on you, one of your rides soon. <laughs> you on one of your so rides. much love for you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>